Hi YouTube, Divas Mahogany 731. And I received some in I mean some comments on my page in the reference to um, you know, me being, you know, having that get real attitude and me being straightforward. And a couple of y'all divas really, really kind of weighed in heavy on my heart. And one of them left a message on September the 9th, and her name is A-Z-I-Z-A-S-I-N-G-H. And I just want to say to you, you asked me to do a, um, you know, like a motivational speaker um, tutorial. And, you know, my life is a chapter. I will be the first to tell you all, I have no shame of the trauma and the turmoil and the pain that I have endured within my 43 years of living. I have no cut cards. I don't want no one to view this video and think that I'm better than them. I don't want nobody to view this video and, and think that I'm trying to gain ratings. I don't want no one to view this video and say, well, wow, Mahogany731 is telling her business. My business is my business, and how I relate it to another sister for growth is help. It's not telling her business. So I want to start off saying that, I mean, it's real touching to me because I didn't know people that you can't even lay your hands on even care to that point. And when I say that, it's because I'm, I'm just going to get straight to the point. And this video might consist of three different parts. As I was coming up as a little girl... I was given away at birth, and my mother was 18 years of age. I'm a 1970 baby, May 31st. And she gave me to her best friends, Harriet and Richard Taylor. And my mom lived in D.C. in the projects in a two-bedroom apartment. My godparents lived in a house in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And... What I want to say is that they raised me up until birth into 13, and my mother took me. They didn't have legal custody. My mother took me from them just to get a welfare check. My mother stopped receiving government assistance for me, and then it was a battle between my godparents. When was they going to be able to get me back? Because they instilled so many values in me. So my mother made a decision to let me go over there on weekends. Let me tell you all this. I'm not going to cry on video because I seek help for this. But it's kind of touching. But I don't mind sharing this story. Because it's therapeutic for me. But I started going over to my real mother's house. Apartment. Um, I think between 13, 14 years of age. And I was exposed to... Remember, she lives in a two-bedroom apartment. Three generations live there. My mother lived there. My mother with her husband. My mother's sister. My mother's sister with her children. And we had a, uh, quote, unquote, no disrespect, a gay uncle. And he stayed there on the sofa. So, therefore, it's me, the oldest, and I have three other brothers. Where, where did I sleep? So, we had to take turns sleeping. And I can recall, thinking back a little I remember seeing mice clamp up and down the curtains and across the pull-out sofa where I slept. And it was a culture shock to me because, remember, I was raised in the suburbs and my godmother was a certified babysitter and my dad was a meat man. So I was never exposed to this kind of behavior. So because I'm scared, my mother beat me. My, my birth mother beat me. Because I came over her house with manners, I got a beating. Then it got to the point I started telling my godmother how I was being treated. And my mom knew that I was going back telling stuff. So my mother kept me away from them for a long, long time. And I can recall my mother is not on drugs, never used drugs. She was a gambler. I can recall being left in the house babysitting my, my brothers. I can, be, I can be recalled of learning how to cook and clean at an early age. I can recall um, just being a mother at the age of, you know, between 14 and 15 years of age. And that's why I'm so shocked at what I do because things was forced upon me as a child. So back then, I started asking questions about where's my dad? Where's my dad? Come to find out my father passed 
when I was three years of age. My father back in the 70s was a number man right here in D.C. And what happened was that I think some deal, some kind of money or number went bad. And some guys tied my dad to a car seat. You know how you take the car seat out of a car? And it was at an auto body shop. And they took my dad, they took my dad and strapped him down and shot him up with battery acid. And that's the story I got from my father's side of the family, how my father died. And they shipped him to North Carolina. That's where the funeral was. Well, anyway, my father was in the Army. He was a vet. A vet. So he, he had left a lot of money. And my mother found out that the money was out there and took all of my money and spent it on her lifestyle, her gambling, and her boyfriend. I have been exposed to mice. I have been exposed to eating leftovers for a week. I have been exposed to taking turns sleeping while, you know, we had to take turns. I have been exposed to having holes in my shoes to the point you have to cut the cardboard in them to put them in there. Um, I have been exposed with the teachers feeding me and putting clothes on my back. And I still will sit here on camera and say, my mother... I don't call that abuse. I call it neglect. Then it got to a point she was mentally abusive to me because I stood out from her children. You ugly black bitch. You're not going to mount to nothing. Those things start coming upon me. And it start to wear real heavy on me to the point I grew up thinking I was ugly, unattractive, and not beautiful. You know, and I I'm skipping a little bit because I want this to be a, a long video. But... You know, to say all of that, I survived, and I'm here, and I had two. I have two daughters, one 26 and one 23. And because I didn't want what I went through to be a repeat pattern, pattern, I try to be extra close to my children. I try to be their mother and not their friend. And my, I have an open door policy. No matter what is concerning, I'm here for my children. However, I was so overprotective that they are buck wild now. They doing them, and, you know, I've been through the thing. You know, a couple of y'all, Miss Truda has asked House Torian. My daughter got mad because I wouldn't pay her car note, and she kept the baby from me. Fine, okay, no disrespect. That's her baby, not mine. So all of a sudden now, she decides she wants to come around, and only because I'm accepting my grandbaby, and my grandbaby is innocent and don't have anything to do with what's going on, my, my grandbaby's back in my life. That's traumatizing to me. And I'm dealing with that as we speak. Um, Y'all going to be caught by surprise as I speak. But while I'm at work, um, my husband brought a female into my home. Yeah. A female has been in my house. This happened last year. So I'm battling a divorce as we speak. And it's not easy. I have someone that's a very important person in my life now. And y'all might have seen on my Facebook page where I say I'm gone and I'm out of town. A couple of my friends know, like Alicia, Black Diva 38, and um, Mama Love Wig. She, they know about what I'm going through. Not just, you know, they don't know the hardcore details. But yeah, I, I filed for an absolute divorce. Of course, I just moved in my house two years ago. I have a gorgeous home, nice cars. So y'all know I'm battling some shit. So, I'm still going to stay strong. And, and the reason why I think I'm on my feet right now today is because there are local people like you all. When I get online and I read y'all messages, it, it just touched me in a very, very, very gentle way. So, you know, keep them coming because y'all are helping me in a way you wouldn't believe. But, um... There's some more that I would like to talk about. It's just so, 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 so much more. Y'all know I'm holding down three jobs and stressful at work and um you know I, it just hurt me because of you know I just moved in my house two years ago and this incident happened here so I'm feeling violated and disrespected to the fullest I don't consider this as home no more I don't want to put one foot forward and, and, and not even hang a picture on the wall because I has been violated in the worst way so you know I have asked my husband what is it about me you don't like and he said it wasn't him. It was his immaturity. And I just think before I lose the little bit of sanity and self-respect that I have for myself, that I need to get a divorce, number one, because I have that much respect for myself. Number two, this is not an incident that can be worked out because this is not the first time. This is the fourth time that my husband ventured outside. Our friendship, he did it three times. He was seeing somebody on three different occasions. And then when we got married, he just did this. So to me... I forgave 
and I'm past that stage. I'm at a stage where I need to release myself before I lose everything that I have within me and kill this motherfucker. Yeah, and and that's why I choose to just take it solo. You know, I haven't really been dropping a lot of videos, and you know, I've just been dealing with me and trying to find my inner core and and, and get back on track because this right here is it, it's not a good feeling. I come so far. I've battled so many battles, and someone that I thought was my best friend in the whole wide world, besides my dad dying. Yeah, I found my dad My dad dead in his apartment, and we buried him on my birthday. When I tell y'all my life is not easy, it's not easy. I'm not putting up no front on YouTube. That's why I'm a real person. I keep it real as possible. And if you was to meet me in person, you'll love me to death. But most people can't take me because I'm me. But I'm going to do a, a part two to this video. And I want to let you all know that I'm fine. You know, don't get on here and be leaving them sorry comments. But I'm absolutely, I am fine. I'm doing soul searching now. I'm searching to find myself at the age of 43. And I don't think it's too late. You know, thank you for all the love and the support. But I'm going to continue to do these motivational videos. And I'm glad that this sister right here um, brought it to my attention. Because right now I just feel so free. So I'll be back. Bye-bye.